Now we've looked at similar stuff to this already, so this isn't going to be all that difficult or new for us. When we're taking a look at graphing linear equations or linear inequalities with two variables. That's all that we're going to be looking at. Now, you know what the inequality symbols are, the less than, the greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Those things you definitely need to keep in mind. So, let's take a look and see how this is going to go. We want to go and have y on one side, everything else on the other. So when I am looking at this, I want to determine whether or not this is true. I can plug all the values in here and see what I come up with. So for this particular one, my y would be 9. So I would have 9 is 9 greater than negative 3 times 2 plus 5. 9 is greater than, let's see, this is going to be negative 6. Plus 5, so I get 9 is greater than 1. Is that true? It's true. That works. So, let's try another one of these. What about this one? Now, I can just plug them in to see if it's actually going to work. If we're going to deal with this as an equation, then we definitely want the y on one side. So, this one here will be 3 times what's y? Negative 7. Minus what's x? Negative 3. Is that less than negative 18? Well, this is going to give me negative 21 plus 3. Is this less than negative 18? Well, let's see. Negative 21 plus 3 would give me negative 18 less than negative 18. So is negative 18 less than negative 18? Negative 18 is less than negative 18. No, they're equal, aren't they? They're the same. So, does this, no, nope, that'd be false. Wouldn't work. True, false, yes, no. However you want to go and identify it. So, let's check C here. Let's... So, I've got negative 2 times y. What's y? Well, that would be 4 less than or equal to 1 minus, what's x? Negative 3. Again, remember, when you replace a variable with its value, make sure that you put the parentheses around it. So, this turns out to be negative 8, less than or equal to 1 plus 3. So, the question is, is negative 8 less than or equal to 4? And the answer is true. So, there we go. But all we need to do to determine whether a point is or is not is plug it in. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you uh, two minutes, and I want you to do A, B, and C. So, Mr. Dibidol, for number for A there, is true or is it false? Does it work or doesn't it? You're, so you're telling me A and B are both true? No, I'm saying A is true and B is false. Okay, so according to Mr. Dibidol, this is going to be true and this is going to be false. So let's check this out to see if this is actually going to be the case. So if I put Y in here, that's going to be 1 has to be greater than or equal to 7 minus 4 times negative 2. So 1 is greater than or equal to 7 plus 8. So 1 is greater than 15. So 1 is greater than 15. I'd say you're a little off there, aren't you? No. Okay, so let's, let's see if he, maybe, maybe he got B right. So, for B, negative 2 times 0 plus 0, is that less than 0? Well, that gives me 0 
plus zero, is that less than zero? So is zero less than zero? No, so false. So you are correct on that one. So you at least got one out of two. So Bailey, what about C? False, you say? Well, they could be. Okay, he says true. Well, let's just see. So four times 13 minus six times four, is that bigger than 15? Well, what's four times 13? <coughs> 52. Minus 24. Is that bigger than 15? So what's 52 minus 28? So is 28 greater than 15? So you got lucky in when you said true. Okay, now, when we're graphing a linear inequality in two variables, the set of all points that satisfy the inequality are either going to be above it or below it or on the line, depending upon what the inequality is. So, to determine this, what we generally want to do is make sure the y is on one side, Everything else is on the other, so we're, what we have is like a linear equation. And then we want to test points to see if our assumption is correct. So, I want to go and make a table of values for this thing. And I want to graph it. Now, when it comes to dealing with this one, one of the ways that we said that we can deal with this is by going and identifying where the zeros are. So, if x is zero, what value must y be to be equal? Because we gotta graph the line and the line is going to be equality. So if x is zero, what must y be? Three. So if y is zero, what must x be? What must it be? Three. Three. So if you put zero in for y, three times zero is zero. X is greater than or equal to negative nine. We want negative nine. Oh, you said negative nine. Good. So negative nine is correct. Okay. Ah, I, you were asking that in terms of a question. I want to kind of revisit the first one there. I got that negative 9 there. So that 3 should be what, Jordy? Negative. Yep. So now we've got the correct things. So x is 0. y is going to be at negative 3. So that's 1, 2, 3. So there's one point. y is going to be 0 when x is at negative 9. So it's over here. Now, this is equality, so that means I get to use a solid line. I know. Okay. Now, which way should I shade? I want to know where this is going to be shaded in at so I can identify all the values. One of the good ones to check on, and the easiest ones to work on, is usually 0, 0. So, what? Oh, we've done this. We've done this with uh, just straight lines. So, if I plug in this 0, 0, so it means 3 times 0 plus 0 greater than or equal to negative 9. So that's going to be 0 plus 0. Is that greater than or equal to negative 9? In other words, is 0 greater than or equal to negative 9? Yes, it is. So 0 is bigger. So that means that this thing is shaded all up in here. Anything that is in this area is perfectly legal as an answer. Okay? 
let's double check this here once. Let's say I choose this point down here, which is negative 10 comma negative 10. Is this true? So if I put 3 times negative 10 plus negative 10, is this greater than or equal to negative 9? Well, this is going to be negative 30 plus negative 10 greater than or equal to negative 9. Is negative 40 bigger than negative 9? And the answer would be no. Got to remember on it, think of it in terms of a thermometer for temperature. What would you rather have, 40 below or 9 below? Well, it makes good ice, true, but I'd rather have it negative 9 rather than negative 40. So, I'm going to give you a couple minutes here, and I want you to do this particular problem. All right. Now, to begin with, X, Y, 0, 0. So if I plug in 0 for X, what will I get back out, Kaya? Is Kaya correct, Kaya? Ms. Lindell, if I put in 0 for Y, what is X? Now, we've got a little bit of a problem here, gang, because if I put 0 in for x, that means that 2y has to be less than or equal to negative 12. The only way for it to be equal is if this is negative 6. If y is 0, that means that there is here, and we have negative 6 over here, this is just 2. You guys switched them around when you did them. Or when Kaya did them, I should say. Now, x is 0, y is negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. x is 2, y is 0, 1, 2. This inequality is equal to, so that means that we are going to have a solid line. Now the question is, where do we shade? So again, we will go through and pick on 0, 0. What happens if I put that in there? So if I got 2 times 0 minus 6, oops, sorry, 2 times 0 minus 6 times 0, is that less than or equal to negative 12? That'll be 0 minus 0, less than or equal to negative 12. So is 0 less than or equal to negative 12? And the answer is no. So if this is the point that we were looking at, that means that it's going to be shaded over here because this is where 0, 0 is not. So this is the shaded area. Okay, That means any value that I would choose that is in there should work. So, let's check. Say I choose the point, x is going to be 10, y is going to be 0. Because that's over here in the shaded area. So, if I go and put in 2 times 0 minus, oops, sorry, minus 6 times 10, is that less than or equal to negative 12? Well, that would be 0 minus 60 less than or equal to negative 12. So is negative 60 less than or equal to negative 12? And that is true, so we have shaded in the correct spot. Now, there are other ways of dealing with this. Using slope-intercept form makes life a lot easier, especially if we're going to go through and use the calculator. So what we need to do first, then, is identify what that looks like. So if I've got 5y plus x is less than 20, I have to subtract the x to both sides first. 
So that means that it is going to be 5y less than negative x plus 20. Divide both sides by 5, divide both sides by 5. So that means I have y is less than negative, well, this would be 1 fifth x plus what's 20 divided by 5? 4. Now, the nice thing about this, we can identify the y intercept 1, 2, 3, 4. So I know it goes through here. I know it has a slope of down 1 over 5, down 1 over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, puts it over here. So if I go backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, boom, end up over here. Now, is this a solid line or a dotted line? Dotted. Because it doesn't have equality into it, that means it's just going to be the dotted line or the dashed line. So, this is our boundary line. Now, here is the nice part. I don't have to do any testing for this to determine where things are. Y has to be what? Less than. So that means that this is where it's shaded. All down in here. And if you don't believe me, you can pick on that point uh, zero, 00. If I put 0 in there, is 0 less than 4? Yeah, that's true. So it fits. What about the other one? Well, if I take a look at the next one that I have, I am going to subtract 10x to both sides. So that gives me negative 2y is less than negative 10x minus 2. Divide both sides by negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 2. So I have y. Now, whenever we multiply or divide by a negative and we are using inequalities, what do we have to do with the sign? Anybody remember? Flip it. So instead of it being less than, now it will be greater than. So negative 10 divided by negative 2 is 5x. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is going to be 1 plus 1. So, so here we go. We'll graph this out. Y-intercept is at 1. That puts me down here. Next thing I've got is 5x, so that means my slope is 5 over 1. Up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, so I know i got a point over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, point here. 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. So I know that my points are going to be in that in a line. Is this a solid or a dotted line? Dotted because it's greater than. So here, 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 and here. Where will it be shaded? Will it be shaded above or below? Well, what does Y have to be compared to the other stuff? Y has to be bigger, correct? So that means y is going to be shaded here. I know that made a nice black out of the thing. But... And that's where that gets shaded. Because that's where y is bigger than. What's there? Let's check a point, see if it actually makes any sense. 
If I were to put 0 in for x, I would get 1. If I pick a point up here, that's 10. Is 10 bigger than 1? Yeah, so it works. So what I want you to do is I'm going to give you a couple of minutes, and I want you to go through and graph these out. All right, let's see if yours matches what I've got. So if I take a look at E to begin with, I've got 4y plus 4 greater than x. So I subtract 4 to both sides, subtract 4 to both sides. So now I have 4y greater than or equal to or greater than negative x minus 4. Divide by 4, divide by 4, so y greater than 1 fourth x, since you can put a 1 in front of the x, minus, and then this would be 4 over 4, but 4 over 4 is the same as 1. So, y-intercept is at negative 1, slope, 1 over 4, up 1 over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Up one over two, three, four. Back it up. Okay. This is not e equal, so it's not going to be a straight line. So we're going to end up having the dot dotted line. And I want where y is what compared to everything else above it. So. That means our shading is going to be, let's try it this way. Our shading is going to be up here. Yes, it is. So if I wanted to check this, if I put zero in there, is 0 bigger than negative 1? Yeah, so it works. So let's take a look at the next one. Let's try. So now I've got 4. Oops, sorry. So now I have 4 minus 2y is greater than negative x. Subtract 4, subtract 4. Negative 2y is greater than negative x minus 4. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. So I have y, because I've divided by negative 2, inequality gets flipped, so it's going to be less than. Negative x over negative 2 is simply going to be 1 over 2x. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 turns out to be plus 2. So there's that equation. So we want it y-intercept of 2, so that's going to put me right there. Slope is 1 half, so it's down 1 over 2. 1 over 2. Over two. Now you'll notice that when I'm doing this, it makes a little bit more sense put in all of the possible points for this. And the reason why I do that is so that when I'm either, if I got a dotted line, like I do this time, all I really have to do is just say it's, it's going to be like this. I just simply do not connect them. It makes life a little bit easier for drawing them up. So I got a dotted line, and that's where it's at. Now, where should this thing be shaded? Well, y is identified below it, okay? And if I were to pick 0, 0, put that in here, put 0 in here, is 0 less than 2? Yes, this is the truth. So we would be shading in where it is below. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, why in the world would I want to put two of these on? 
the same graph. Well, there is something that we are going to be getting into as we move further on where we are going to have to put two of these on here, see where the overlap is. It was actually, in reality, this idea was a, a U.S. secret that was guarded up until the early 70s, 1970s. Okay. I'll explain a little bit more later, but it's kind of an interesting story. But using technology, now a lot of you, this is what you want to go through and do. So if I got the graphing calculator and I want to go through and do this. It's here. I want a graph where y is less than or equal to 4 on a graphing calculator. Well, I'll just go y is equal to, I would put in 4. But that'll just give me a line. I want to be able to shade above or below. So if I look at the inequality on this, where would I be shading? Above it or below it? And since I'd be shading below it, I press the back key. And I want to get it blinking over here. Okay. If I got it blinking over here, I've got some choices. If I press Enter, I get a big line. If I press enter again, you'll notice how it has shade above. Well, we want shade what? Below. So I press it again, and it's shaded below. I press graph, and there we go. So there it goes, and it graphs it. It's quick and easy, right? Let's see, do this, back, screenshot, see only clipboard. So, that's what you end up with, something that looks like that. Now, what about the other one if I want to do it? If I want to go through and do the next one, I'm going to have to put it into y equals slope intercept form so I can put it on there so that means I'm going to subtract 3x to both sides subtract 3x to both sides and then I end up with negative y less than or equal to negative 3x plus 2 divide both sides by negative 1 divide by negative 1 I got to get rid of that negative so this is what I have to do so y is going to be like this what do I have to do with the inequality because I divide it by negative? Flip it. So this would be greater than or equal to. This would end up being 3x minus 2. So now I can go through and graph. Go back to the y equals. I put my 3, my x, and minus 2 in there. But now I'm going to have to go and switch this around. So I'm on that now. I press enter. Press enter, press enter, this does the different things. Do that, do that, and there we are, we're above. So if I hit graph, now I get where the graph is above. And there you go. Pretty easy. So, what I want you to do, and take a minute or so, and do both of these and leave both of them on the same graph. Well, you'll have to think about that, won't you? All righty, here I go. Now, I said I had one of these both on the graphing calculator this time. So, reset this one plus 712, so it's reset. So, first one, why? Greater than or equal to zero. So I want to sh it shaded above. Okay, so I got that one. Next one. Well, I don't quite know where that one's going to go yet, so I've got to do the work. So we are going to subtract nine to both sides. So I get 3y is greater than or equal to 3x minus 9. Divide both sides by 3, divide by 3, so y is greater than or equal to x 
minus 3. So I grab the calculator. Since it's above, I can make sure that I am doing this graph again. And I put in x minus 3 graph. So there's the first one. And there's the second one. Notice how it went and drew the lines the other way now. So it kind of gives you an idea of which one are which. Depending upon the, the operating system, it'll do that. So, last thing. Nellie is making a peanut butter and jelly snack for a school function. Each tablespoon of jelly has 15 grams of carbohydrates. Each tablespoon of peanut butter has 3 grams of, kind of carbohydrates. She wants the snack to have no more than 90 grams of carbohydrates. Graph the inequality that represents the possible amounts of each ingredient. Now, this is reality. Depending upon a great number of situations, you may actually have to go through and do something like this. Okay. So, if I look at this, we've got two different things going on here. We've got peanut butter and jelly, right? 15 grams of the jelly. So that would be 15J. Plus carbohydrates for the peanut butter, 3 P for peanut butter. What does this have to be less than? This has to be less than or equal to 90. Now, for this one, we would almost be better off going through and using this for X and we've got Y. Now, we'll call this jelly and we'll call this one here peanut butter. No big deal. So, if I were to have zero jelly, how much peanut butter could I have on there? Well, 90 divided by 3, last I checked, was 30. Okay? If I have absolutely no peanut butter, how much jelly could I get on there? Well, that looks like 6, right? 15 and 15 is 30. 3 thirties is going to be 90. So that means that it would have to be 6. How would I graph this out? Well, I don't have 30 lines going up here, but I could say, you know what? This top up here is going to be 30. Perfectly legal. This is going to be 6, so I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here can be my peanut butter. Here's my jelly. Oh, I did that wrong. Peanut butter's up here, jelly's down there. Okay. So I would have a line. And because we have equality going on with it, put it this way. Okay. So where am I going to shade? Am I going to shade above or below? It has to be less than that, so that means it would have to be less than the line. Now, I cannot have anything over here because it's negative. I cannot have anything over here because it's negative. So that means only within this area would the actual answers be? Okay. So any combination that is within these points will be correct. Okay. So if I wanted to, could I have three tablespoons of jelly and four tablespoons of peanut butter? Would that work? Well, what's three times 15? That'd be 45. So, 10. So, like I said, if I wanted three of the jelly and how much of the Y? 
How much peanut butter did I say? I wanted three and four. Yeah, three and four. So if I've got three of the jelly, well, three times that is going to be what? 45. Four times that is going to be 12. So at 45 comma 12, will this work? Why? Because if I put in four here, that's one, two, three, four. So four is here, and I've got three lines up. One, two, three. Well, let's see. What would, what's, there, what's that going to yeah. work out to be? Well, that would turn out to be 60, no, 57. So it would fit. It would work. It's possible. Could I put five of each on? Could I have five and five? Would that work? Yes or no? Well, here, five times that, what's five times 15? 75. Five times three is 15, 15 and 75. 90. It work. Also, now since the track, your bus will be right after the 